Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming today to another meeting of Pacific Hackers. Uh, my name is George Soto, and I'm here today with Daryl. Um, and Daryl will be talking about protecting your PII during COVID times. I'll give you a little bit of an update. <clears throat> Obviously, as you all probably know, uh, things are still tough with the with the pandemic, so we're not we're not going to resume any in person meetings. We have one more meeting before the end of the year, since we've been meeting monthly. Uh, there might be a, a, an actual talk, or we do a capture the flag type of event and uh, uh, try to have some fun uh, from home. Um, it looks like we're not gonna be able to resume our meetings anytime soon once we once the year ends. So. Uh, our first meeting next year will probably be about what we're going to speak about, which is always that we do all the time. Uh, and then from there, we'll select the topics. And if there is enough topics, we can even go by weekly. It will depend on the participation and your willingness to, to contribute and, and, and engage. So um, we have one more meeting. Uh, we do have a Discord channel. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post the Discord channel uh, address invite in the chat for this uh, for for this webex session and uh, uh, for those of you who are here for the first time we meet every month we're a group based in San Jose California we used to meet a at uh, the Martin Luther King Library <clears throat> we're an open group everybody's welcome um, and we try to help people get jobs in infosec we try to learn ourselves uh, by putting uh, ourselves to do research, share that research. Uh, we build up teams to uh, do competitions, and we try to do events that basically are community-based events. Uh, we don't charge anything. The only thing that costs here is your time that you're going to invest in learning new things. Uh, and uh, in these times, we um, we have helped people. Uh, there's been some people affected by, unfortunately by the layoffs but uh i have to say that we as a sector has been we have been uh, very lucky we haven't been affected as bad uh so those who lost their jobs had actually found jobs pretty quick and i'm happy to to say that if you are in need of help and need um maybe uh uh somebody that can guide you or or in terms of of uh, infosec job uh, many of us are aware of the opening positions, I post it all the time in Discord. There's like-minded people there, They're just like you are either studying or trying to find a job. So we try to give support to those who um, are basically trying to uh, get better careers and uh, make a better living. So with that in mind, <clears throat> we will be announcing soon <clears throat> our, our, our last meeting of the year. Uh, and I think it's probably gonna be a catch of the flag. Uh, not sure yet, but I think so. Uh, we'll let you know in, uh, in advance. And I hope all of you are safe. Uh, stay safe. And uh, hopefully, we've been hearing good news about the vaccine. Hopefully, soon we will. I don't know how, but um, how soon, but hopefully, we will get to resume at one point next year. Uh, and with that in mind, I'm going to leave you with Daryl. Daryl is a member of Pacific Hackers. He's been with us for a while. Uh, actually, and uh, he's very active. Uh, thank you for your service. It's a, it's a, a amazing human being and a veteran. Uh, and today he's going to give us a presentation about protecting your PAI during COVID times. So take it away. Cool. Thank you, Rod. I really appreciate it. And thank you for everybody being here. Um, I'll jump into this right away, uh, just because uh, we'll see how long it takes. And you know, I've given some examples that I will uh, also show on the presentation. I just suggest that if you have any questions, kind of hold it towards the end. So uh, my goal is to make sure that we meet the slides and uh, finish the presentation so that you can see the entire process. So uh, yeah, uh, PII, as you can see, it's uh, very much personal data that uh, we cannot get it to compromise. So I'll show you what the uh, presentation has to uh, speak of itself. Um, as you can see, yeah, PII stands for, of course, personal identifiable information. 
uh, it's something that is uh, of very much for yourself, you know, uh, that identifies you and only you as a very own individual, um, you know, and you, we all know in the US here, the biggest example is your social security number, right? I mean, once you get your social security number compromised, it's pretty practically impossible to clean that up. So you have to go through a lot of hoops uh, and ties. Um, you know, of course, we all know the PII is the uh, primary uh, attack vector uh, when it comes to identity theft in this country. And that's the main thing that people go for when they try to steal your data. Uh, when they want to um, disguise us, um, you. Uh, of course, you know the social security is directly related to you. It's something we call a primary key of your personal data. Uh, it relates to you and only you. Uh, just like, for example, a VIN number is to a vehicle or um, using ISBN number to a book, uh, the social security number is only you uh, in this entire universe, it's just you. The other forms of PII that identifies you uh, that can carry significant uh, damage if compromised is, of course, driving license, you know, that only belongs to you. Uh, your email, of course, you know, you'll be surprised to know because when somebody sends you an email, it's just only you, right? Um, that, you know, you cannot afford to get compromised. Of course, your signature, that's very critical because signature is primarily heavily used in your banking financial informations. Uh, of course, your passport number, you don't want somebody to duplicate your passport. And of course, most important, we don't want somebody to rob you of your finances. Your bank, your credit card number is, of course, very critical to you. You know, of course, medical records. Uh, some people may not realize the the damage it can do to you. Of course, medical record numbers falls under a subcategory called PHI. Uh, that's also very important. You know, you want to make sure that doctor people have the right, you know, information, they're doing the right surgery on you, uh, right diagnosis and things like that. Uh, you don't want something to be wrong happening to you on the operating table. Um, something you want to be very careful about, and when two things put together, your full name and your date of birth does become your PII. Uh, because remember, just your name by itself, like John Smith, <laughs> there's hundreds of John Smiths out there, does not itself speak of PII. And now that is your independent date of birth, because for example, my birthday was last week, November 2nd. There's hundreds of people born on November 2nd. So those two individually by itself doesn't carry any weight, but when put together, they become very little. Regardless, um, because that's who, that's who you... Sorry. Oh, uh, your phone number, uh, of course, in an active mode, um, when your phone number is tied to you, uh, of course, it's very important. But of course, if you change your phone number, um, that becomes not really apparent to you. Uh, certain things like your home address becomes debatable, um, cannot really be considered as PII from what I was reading because today you can own the home, tomorrow you can sell that home. So there's certain things that will not necessarily be your PII. So you just got to weigh uh, what's important to you. So, um, so how do you protect your personal data? Um, as you can see, you know, personal identifying information. Uh, basically, right now, during the COVID times, is getting pretty much more in demand. Uh, the threat actors pretty much, you know, they're sitting home, being idle, being bored, um, of course, doing a lot of cyber attacks uh, here and there. Uh, PII is, of course, very much important to each and every one of us, right? It's surprising to see how much of our personal data can be found on Google. Um, not something that you want uh, people to have public access to, like private investigators, they can easily run your information and who knows what they can use that for or sell that to. Um, this webinar that I'm doing is pretty much intended to give you a high level to see how your information can be found online and what you can do as a baseline uh, to extract your PII off Google, you know, and just kind of clear yourself from a lot of data libraries. So something is better than nothing. Um, what we're gonna use is a CCPA, which is California Consumer Privacy Act, um, using that as an example, a driver point, how we can use that to remove your PII online, uh, using a concept called opt out uh, from uh, common data brokers. This is something that's new that's coming in play. And what happened was, as you can see in the past, uh, we have GDPR, which is very relevant to Europe, a regulation that they follow. Uh, they have that. Uh, but their default nature is opt-in, which means if you want to be available for any other general public, you have to opt-in according to GDPR. 
for here, it's vice versa for us. Um, the CCPA came in play because of GDPR. Um, that's how CCPA came into effect. But our default nature is opt-on, which means automatically you are right there available online. If you want to get yourself out and away, you have to kind of opt out of it. Sorry, yes. You are basically you know, sold and then you have to opt out, which means it's a little opposite than what the Europe is. So advantage is GDPR has and disadvantage to what we have. But again, um, programs out there that you can use and I'll walk you through the process how that's a little bit um, that you can use to your help to get yourself away from uh, online. Uh, yeah, uh, so CCPA is something that came into effect January uh, 1st, 2020. Um, it's basically your right or your request to delete your PII uh, opt out basically um, a process and um, the other states, other um, residents from other states can also piggyback on this program as well. So it's not something that only California can use uh, because of the high population and high data records in California. That's why CCPA was imperative uh, to come in play, but there's other states out there that's a little bit in process that's going to be following a similar legislator and they're going to be coming in um, as things follow through. Um, I know this year because of COVID and other things, there are other states like Texas, I think, Florida, a couple others, Illinois, that's a little bit in works trying to build a legislator according to like similar to what CCPA has. So, um, but again, you can always use this opportunity um, and it's not something that just tied to CCPA. Why? So why why do we have to worry about this? Well, your credentials, as you can see, is is very critical to you, right? I mean, last thing you want to see is this being sold or being on dark web. So, you know, last thing you want to see is your information being sold on dark web, not something that you want to deal with. We know that your information is in a lot of bad hands, uh, not something that you want to be dealing with. So, well, the prediction was, of course, for 2020, um, you know, there will be an immense uh, data breach uh, in your privacy data, and of course it's happening, you know, um, you know, if you haven't been subject to that, then uh, knock on wood, but people, those information have been stolen. You can probably talk to them and how they have to go through a lot. So a few advisories, again, I'll walk through the process, you know, search for yourself online, the best measure, uh, just Google yourself, basically your first name, middle initial, last name, or however you feel comfortable. And then, uh, you know, based on, I'll, again, I'll walk you through some of the data brokers, how you can contact them, you know, via email or your phone number or opt out option. That's mainly the footnotes. Uh, there's many ways how can you can reach out to them and get yourself removed. So, and uh, what do you call? Uh, yes, some of the data brokers, you can see the big name ones out there. I just given a little uh, research, you know, um, inventory of some of the big ones out there you can use. I'll pick three from here that I'll walk you through. Um, each one is a little different, so that kind of will give you a little principality of what you looking at, how to go about work through your process and to remove them. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at first uh, being verified. Um, very good one to use. Um, if you look at that link over there, you can read about their privacy, how the data uh, is being used, and again, I just took a, a little um, screenshot of for California residents, but again, other states can use the same process to get themselves offline. Uh, it's a very good information with the privacy link over there, like other agencies, sorry, data brokers have similar, you know, reading according to those, if you wanna read further and learn about that, how the data goes online and how you can remove them and how can they be used for. So what you call, um, when we click on this being verified, and I'm gonna just use this example. Um, you can, of course, search anybody over here, right? Using first name, last name. Uh, but what you wanna do is, we are really concerned about how do you remove yourself. So a lot of these websites, and again, this is an example I'm gonna walk through. You wanna look for something like, do not sell your personal information or how to remove yourself. So we're gonna click on there. And um, what I'm gonna use is, I'm gonna just use my dad as an example. And I'm gonna type his name. And, uh, and again, um, this is just an example. It gives you a little high level of what or how to work through this process. Um, I'm just gonna leave the state open because his name is pretty uh, common. I mean, not common, pretty peculiar. And as you can see, that's him over there. Um, of course, he lived in Sacramento, El Grove. Family members over there. So I would click on that. Now I can just put his email 
or oh, my email and I'm just going to put his email. And I'm going to put this and of course he's going to get an email. I'm just going to have to buzz him after the webinar and let him know so that he knows what to do and just brief him through the process. So. Okay, did we miss something here? All right, of course you have to do this thing. Send verification. Okay, boom. So the email has gone out. Now, as you can see in the slides, again, um, we clicked on this link over here. This You can also, like I was saying earlier, you can call these people, uh, you can email them. Uh, what do you call here? We just ran through that example. Uh, you will get an email. So my dad in this case will get an email. When I did mine, I got an email. Uh, it will be something like this that will show up. Um, you click on that link and it will uh, give a verification to the agency and then within like I would say a day or two at most 48 hours, um, they'll remove the information. It's just a pretty much a check they want to do from their side to make sure that there is no Robert um, or any uh, robocall, you know, request coming in that is a legitimate person sending a request and then uh, they'll go ahead and immediately uh, remove your information. So. Sometimes it's immediately, sometimes at most I've seen uh, those list of inventory of data brokers I showed you. On average, I would three days, give you three days, they'll remove your information. So uh, you can always go back in a week and so check and you should be pretty much fine. If you do your search like that, um, if you show up, you can move that. If you do not show up, it'll be fine. And then I'm gonna give an example. For example, uh, when I did remove mine and let me see. So, and I did mine like about in June or something. So you can see if you try to look for mine, it show it didn't show up because I went through the process. So, if you see something like that, well, after you run through the process, you're good to go. So, just kind of example of feel of how the process works. Um, I'm going to run through another example. Uh, this is a good one, uh, num number. And uh, and so, again, like I said, you want to be careful about if you're trying to search yourself or if you're trying to really remove. So because if you're going to be, and I'm going to run through my name here. And I was going to ask for volunteers, but you know, I, I understand the comfort level for everybody in this webinar. So I want to be respective of that. But if I click myself here, so now the system is searching for itself. And as you can see, I really don't see myself over here. So I, because I ran through this website as well and I cleared myself. So um, I'm gonna pick a family member that uh, that I have that has not gone through this process. So how that person shows up and how you can clear this. Uh, this is number again, you can see here at the bottom, if you go uh, here, it says remove my info. Um, this is something you can click on again. You have an option either, depends on your comfort level, you can either email them, uh, they respond very quick or you can call them. Um, I also went through a couple of data brokers and I did try and call them to just give a little sample and they were very responsive. Um, they were easily able to get somebody on the phone. It's a real life person. Um, they you give them your information, your first name, last name, date of birth. They'll set you up and they'll clear you. And then when I was able to go back after a couple of days, look for myself, um, I was cleared. So they're very helpful. They're effective. And again, thanks to CCPA, uh, this program was not there before. It's fairly new. So try and take advantage of that. And again, like I said, it's comfort level, either you feel like calling them, you don't even have to wait on the phone for most part. Uh, there's somebody comes on right away, either you email them, email responses pretty quick, couple hours. I find it the best uh, just doing it online because you can save screenshots. So uh, remove my information, I'm gonna click on that. Uh, I'm gonna pick one of my family members uh, because I saw her available and let's see, I'm gonna type L group here. Okay, boom, and then search. Okay, so um, so there you go. So she's showing up over there. I'm gonna click on the view details. And what I'm gonna do is give it a little time. It's kind of loading. It's searching through the database. So I hope I'm not going fast enough for you guys. Um, is the pace okay for everybody? So I'm gonna try. Yeah, it's looking good. Okay, I'm gonna try and do this again. Sometimes my internet, I just changed my router, so it gives a little bit of drag. So, okay. Um, so, I'm gonna click on this. Okay, boom. Okay, so if you see over here, that's um, 
uh, family members' personal information. Not a good thing, right? Too much information out there. And that's pretty scary. That's not fun in the data better thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this URL and copy that and then go back. And if you follow through, what I'm doing is when I go and click on remove my information, and it makes it very simple, user friendly for you. Like I said, every website is different, but the concept and the principality is same. You see over here, it says opt out of number. So remember the URL that I cut and paste? I'm just going to put them here and then submit. I'm not going to do that because I have to talk to my family member and let her know that I'm doing this. But if I click that, of course, like the similar example that I showed you in example one, that person will get an email. That person will open the email, click on opt. Um, we know whatever option is and I think I do have a screenshot on my option yes and you can see over here so like I was showing you we'll click submit that person will get an email this is my example here email will be something like that it would take you through the hyperlink you will click on that and then boom there you go you are all clear so that's a confirmation email that shows that you are in a process and they will act according to your request and then you are removed so um, and of course, when you search for yourself, you shouldn't see yourself. You will see something like that page removed, some, something along the line. So just like I shown you, when I look for myself using my city, I cannot find myself. So something like that. Um, I'm going to quickly run through another example here. Check people. Another third one, a very good one. And um, again, like I said, um, each of them pretty much make it very easy for you. Your comfort level, either use the email, your phone number or you remove my info. My main process over here is to do the webinar where I can kind of walk you through the remove info because we know email and phone number is pretty easy, right? We know all how to deal with them and just run through the process. Uh, remove info is a little bit different. Um, the reason I'm using three examples is because um, each of them is a little different. So over here, if you go all the way down and remember, you always want to hit the footnotes. That's where your guidance is. Okay, they will give you different options. Like I said, the wording is different. They'll either say remove myself or do not sell my information or something there. You just kind of have to gauge and use the indication as to what you want to click on to remove yourself. So here, do not sell myself. OK, I got this over here. Um, I'm going to use my wife's information because I think this is one of those that I did not put my wife through. Um, so I'm going to type her name. And of course, she lives in Elgrove Grove here with me. And uh, yes, in California, of course. Uh, you just go through your robot checklist, cars, when I just click on this. Uh, okay, I must admit something. Okay, bicycle. I'm not a big fan of trying to use this kind of examples, but we'll see. Okay, crosswalk. Just bear with me, hopefully we can clear this. Okay, finally. All right, so um, there you go. Boom, she shows up. And for example, very simple reason, you can see my name is over there tied to her, right? I'm the husband and of course, you know, family members, she lived you know, here and with me in Elgrove, Sacramento, Irving, she's from Texas, Oklahoma. So obviously that's her. Um, I'm not gonna click on that because she's gonna come knocking at my door, but of course I'll walk through the process with this with her so she can clear her. But if you reference back to my screenshot slides over here, so as you can see, if I were to go click on, of course, remove record, I would get the screenshot over here, a very simple, straightforward again, uh, the process of state um, removing yourself. You would click on that. You would get an opt out option. Um, again, you do your due diligence, fill out whatever is needed and you search for yourself. You'll get a new page called selected. Um, of course, you know, a lot of times they want to verify you to see if you are a real live legitimate person and real request so that it's not a robocall or robo request. You put in your email as needed you know in this case i would put her email so that she would get an email and she would submit the due diligence um, in this case i just put mine over there send confirmation and boom there you go uh, it will uh, reset back to you the email has been filed and then you know you would open an email this is an example for me over here when i did mine i said hey daryl al you would like to request you know um, complete your confirmation boom you do that um, just a little bit of verification again. This is for your records. You know that this is being done. So later on down the road, if there's any issues with them, if you're showing up, you can always reference this. And again, these people are 100% pretty good with what they do. So you will not go wrong according to the principalities and policies that are there uh, to protect our data. So anyways, um, so those those are three examples I did. Um, based on our time, I don't want to take too much of uh, you guys' time, but 
you know, if you get a chance, this is another very good one, instant checkmate. Try if you want to walk through the process, you know, while we're in this presentation or maybe after this webinar, if you want to later tonight, uh, do it yourself. Uh, try instant checkmates. Uh, just walk through the process. If you go on the bottom, just click on sell my info. Uh, just follow through the process, very straightforward. And then uh, that can walk you through the process. So uh, just an example of how uh, you can clear your ground. Um, so anyways, again, just to uh, highlight um, how to opt out process. It's very simple. Just run through a couple of checks. Step one, you know, you would contact the broker that you want. Uh, either reach out to them through phone, email, or using opt out form. Uh, your best get is always using the opt out form. It's very simple, straightforward. Like I said, you can get screenshots. Uh, search for yourself, you know, find yourself out there, uh, verify, you know, remove yourself uh, using the option. And then uh, just follow the process. Okay, and then um, what you call, as you can see, the um, the data brokers that I went through, uh, let me show you here again. These are some of the main ones I covered. There are some big websites. There are some small ones. Um, the thing is I'm working with FBI right now to see if there's a centralized database that we can use to do this uh, right now. Uh, there hasn't been anything significant like that. But what it is, is if you run through majority of this, each data broker feeds into other ones. So they kind of like are interrelated, internetworked or intertied. So if you go through a bunch of these, it will clear from the other ones as well. So uh, there are some big ones like this ones over here. I did a good research. I spent a couple of days lo looking at these. So if you run through most of them, uh, you are actually on a good track. So uh, this feeds into smaller databases too. So you don't have to worry about those. So uh, like one rep is a good one. Um, a number to name is a good one. These are some of the big ones. Uh, if you clear, walk through this process, like I said, again, the one I showed you, for example, is one, two, and three, they will clear the ground for a lot of the smaller ones. So um, something is better than nothing. And give me a second here. Let me get to where it is. So yes, like I was saying earlier. Um, so if you get like about 70 to 80% of your data and move using those data library, um, as time goes by, you're gonna have your information on Google less and less available, uh, which is which is good. So, and eventually as time goes by, it will clear up. Again, you know, why do you want your PII offline? Is because you basically, last thing you wanna see is yourself being sold on dark web, deep web. And that's not a fun thing. That's a, a we all know from cybersecurity, that's not something where you wanna be. So um, again, um, thanks to uh, CCPA Effective 1120, um, they came into play because of high California population. As you can see, California population is about 41 million right now. I think we're looking at what, Texas about 30 million. Florida is like third with 20 million. Uh, because of this high state population, uh, these policies are coming in play to protect our information. Like I said, again, other states are kind of coming behind uh, duplicating CCPA. So uh, try to take advantage of this, use this. Um, adversaries are trying to grab your PII as much as possible to steal your data, to sell it for whatever reason, who knows, right? To get a new passport on their name, under your name, uh, or to speak, uh, to open up new accounts. We know, and we all know the damage of identity theft. So um, like I said, again, other states can use a similar approach, just like CCPA. So you're not tied to, again, um, the Cal being part of California. So uh, why are we doing this? Again, because of COVID, there's a high spike um, in global um, survey events. And the biggest thing is like phishing attacks, uh, PIA getting hijacked. So uh, please protect your credentials. You know, I cannot emphasize enough, um, especially California residents are pretty much on a high end demand. Uh, there's many ways how your PII can be compromised. You know, of course, we all know phishing emails is big out there. It comes in your work email, in your personal email. But there's other things that are coming up to the surface and getting bigger right now. And a lot of times people are not aware of this. Um, something called vishing and smishing. And for me, trust me, I get about two, I would say to three uh, texts every day. And I get phone calls as well, pretty much one phone call every day. And it's pretty much like, you probably know about Nigeria phone calls, uh, text, you know, federal tax return phone calls, the callers calling you and asking you for personal data, right? It's just getting so common and so annoying. So something to be aware of. Um, Anybody calling you, you know, on your phone, asking you for personal stuff is no different than a phishing. Phishing only thing is, is through an email and phishing is through a voice phone call. Um, of course, third measure now is text message, right? We are so 
um, surrounded by text message, right? We just are more easier to pick up our phone and text somebody than calling. If the calling was old school days, now it's all text. Like I said, I get text messages every day. Hey, uh, Daryl, you have a parcel. Click on this link to confirmation uh, for your confirmation and verification so we can deliver your uh, parcel. Uh, UPS text comes to me, USPS text comes to me, uh, Amazon text comes to me like, oh, uh, some from random phone number, right? Everybody has a phone number because of this personal data being sold. I get text messages saying like, I remember getting one yesterday, Amazon account, please click on this links to verify and get your $25 gift card. Now imagine if I had clicked on that, <laughs> who knows, man, I have no idea about this link, what, where it's coming from, what's the background on that is, and imagine just click on that link, boom, there you go. Now I have my personal data that's on my all on my phone that could be sold to somebody or transferred via that link, or I could be even getting a ransomware on my phone. And the next thing I know, my phone is jacked, right? So. Do not click on those links. And those are just as dangerous as anything else. So uh, that's what you call a phishing is. Uh, it's gonna get more and more bigger, higher. Like I said, I'm getting two to three a day. So um, again, why is this happening? Is because of recent attacks. Um, so threat actors, cyber actors are just sitting home and uh, way too much time on hand. And they're trying to do whatever they can to damage other people for fun, whatever reason, who knows, right? But mainly to gain your personal details and your financial details for their benefit. So um, advisory, what to do about this? Well, especially for vision and phishing, we know what to do with phishing, you know, we just delete them or you block them, but for vision and smishing, what do you do? So pretty much take precautions, right? Use your mutual understanding, your due diligence. When you see such calls or text, just avoid them and, and do not respond or do not um, attempt to um, respond to them or if you see anything unfamiliar just ignore it why because the moment you respond what happens is these are coming to you in mass um, mail or mass phone calls or mass text so when you are responding to them you basically are identifying yourself as a valid and a live person and now that whoever is uh, corresponding to you knows you that you really exist and your phone number is valid so then you kind of have grounded yourself to that person and you exposing yourself to further threats and attacks, who knows for what uh, their purposes. So that's the big reason why you do not want to attempt to respond or, you know, or even uh, try to make an answer to them. So what you call uh, something to be very careful, and this is something that was happening around uh, summer, I believe, and there were like instant messages that were coming out through. It was trying to pick up your voice recognition, right? We We are responding to a lot of automated systems and so our voice recognition is being recorded in this so-called databases all over the world in different data centers so when you get a call something like can you hear me now and you respond and when they pick up particular signature with your voice recognition that matches and says yes that can lead to other circumstances that you may not even know in the background what's happening so there is like business out there entities uh, systems that are keeping an account of your voice recognition and a signature to a yes, something like that. And when you put them together, that can access your account settings, your social security information, your purchases tied to whatever databases they are connected with. And that can open up door for you. And there you go, your information can be uh, compromised. You also have, as you can see, some of um, you may know, um, you know that certain people, telemarketers cannot call you after a certain time. Uh, you have another resource like you can go on do not call list It's a federal registry system and put information over there uh, your phone number uh, register them so that they are not supposed to call you or they're not obligated to call you uh, a lot of illegal telemarketing you know can be fine uh, average fine is about up to 16,000 if you really want to follow through and make a file complaint you do that and trust me you'll be surprised to see how some of these are being brought down by the FT, um, FTC so uh, one of the things I've started to do more on active basis, like since last year, is having a Google account. So, for example, when I go to RSA or when I go to State Fair, and you know, of course, when you enter the sweepstakes, right? Do you want to really want to put your real phone number? No. Um, you always try and get a Google, Google account, download a Google Voice, and have a Google account. So when you go and and you know, we want to all enter sweepstakes. You never know; just you may get lucky for some small gift cards here and there, try and put your Google number. Um, so that way, at least, you know, you're using them to 
enter your name. So that way, because when it gets sold to a third party, and if the phone call gets too much, you can always delete the Google number and always get a new one. So something I would suggest, always try and protect your phone number. Like I said, your phone number is one of those uh, PIIs when it's active under your position. You don't want to have people calling you three or four in the morning and just wasting your time. So always try and use a Google number, something, an application that's over there to your disposable. And then of course, above all, you have all smart devices, protect your, um, device, you know, block, use the block features in there. You know, above all guys, I cannot emphasize enough. If there's somebody trying to reach out to you, you know, using a voicemail or text mail, if it's important, they'll leave the message. A lot of times we know this robocalls do not leave a message, but if they do, um, of course, you know, you know how to uh, deal with them. If it's garbage, you delete them. If it's important, somebody trying to reach out to you, they'll leave their contact back. So, so those are some of the things I just wanted to emphasize. Um, and hope that was have helped you. Uh, but again, uh, thank you for attending. And I don't know if anybody has any questions, but uh, hope that was of something of interest to you and something that gave you a little eye opener as to how you can go ahead and, and protecting your information. So uh, this is something also important. Like you know, if you do go ahead and, and try to clear yourself from uh, online, uh, do it as you always for your wife and for your teenage kids who have history, you know, on uh, the financial market on the global because you just never know who's tied to who. So hopefully this is of help to you. There are some uh, questions here. Uh, it says that <clears throat> does opting out, opting out keep you out permanently or you have to worry about other brokers? So what happens is a lot of these brokers, they're tied to each other. Like I, when I went and like removed myself from being verified and number, I went on a couple other uh, brokers and some of them couldn't find myself. Um, so I, I cannot remember randomly. Um, most of them are permanent. They will remove you. And uh, and some of them like you, they may, um, if you do change an address, they might show up again. But that's where I like sometimes speaking to the person can sometimes help. Uh, if you do tell them like that you want to permanently be removed, they will remove you because if they do not, uh, they're in violation of CCPA and this other uh, legislative policy. So a lot of them I've seen have being honest because I've been trying to do this from the last couple of months and 99.9% .9 of these brokers that I've used and I've requested myself of uh, have not shown me back up yet. So uh, they're working uh, because I actually had used my friends who are one or two uh, private investigators and I had them run me through a test and they couldn't find me. Uh, before I did this test, um, I had them look for me, they were able to, but they said that this uh, has been uh, quite a good effective process. So, um, so hope that kind of helps. Question, if, if I don't live in California, what happens to those who don't live in California? So a um, lot of agencies are, uh, a lot of data brokers are honoring this. Um, I, from what I've seen a couple of my friends who are in Texas, they said they were able to uh, sex, successfully were able to get themselves removed. Uh, a lot of times what happens is when you call this person, when you request, as you can see, it doesn't, you don't really necessarily have to put down your state. If you're able to find yourself using first name, last name, and your phone number, um, you, you put in a request um, and they'll still honor it because CCPA is a ground a rule as baseline that is there. But um, I've seen success where a lot of my friends um, were able to remove themselves from uh, from the website as well. And they were not even California residents. Like I said, this is a shift that's moving to other states. So this is something that the data brokers are inheriting and are still honoring. Good. Um, here's uh, somebody's asking for you to put the data brokers that you had displayed before. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. let me put that on the So if you wanna grab this. And, um, and like I said, I, I put quite a lot of research into um, uh, picking some of those. So those are Henry. Um, True People Search is another big one. And like I said, um, CCPA is, again, it's like a baseline that is used, but a lot of these brokers are um, having a, a uh, resource where you can go on the footnotes and click on that. So um, it's it's going to be more and more apparent. So and a lot of a lot of these data brokers are ordering the uh, removal from online. So. Uh, here's another question. What are some sites that prospective employers use? 
Does removing yourself hurt your chances in any way? So the employees are now are being moved towards more doing a um, fingerprinting. And there was a little discussion within our state um, lately. Uh, the employees are more now encouraged to uh, sway away from using the stop data brokers because of financial reasons and to go more uh, use like something like live scan and more fingerprinting, which is more um, apparent or doing more drug test. Because as you can see, these data brokers, they cannot be um, tied with the live scans or the drug test. This is more just to do a random search on you, especially most of these are being used by uh, private investigators. I mean, for example, a common one will be a, a mom that is trying to uh, file a um, child uh, custody uh, support, right? Uh, for a dad who's in Florida or Miami, who knows? And it's easy to file, use a private investigator and resource out one of these data brokers and to find an individual. So that's where things like this come in play. Uh, there are some uh, um, employers who use some of these data brokers. What you can always do is reach out to your employer, uh, prospective employees, and see what, um, and they should be able to advise to you uh, what uh, data brokers they're using, and then um, and then go and uh, remove your data um, accordingly. And so, you know, that, that would be one resource. But again, like I said, a lot of employers are being advised to use more towards um, doing a physical drug test or life scan resources. Uh, because the reason is a lot of these data brokers charge a high amount of money. And if the employees are using this for quite a lot, it becomes more a financial benefit. So that's something that's being looked into. Here's a, uh, another question. <clears throat> I opt out, but they can still, they still call. What do I do? So what you do is, um, it, it depends, like sometimes you want to give it, um, time are you talking about like opt out on the do not call list yes okay I so. Mm -hmm. yeah so so definitely that, that's a clear cut is a federal policy is a federal uh, database library and that's a clear cut violation uh th there is a, a resource on a do not call list where you can go report um uh the uh, communicators to uh, to the ftc uh, and um, you, you know, of course, when they do call, you have a record history, right? Using a phone bill or even your screenshot, and you can always upload those um, and report that. And trust me, um, uh, believe me or not, like FTC will immediately follow through. Um, and you have, a, I believe, a case manager, somebody assigned to you that you can work with, and they will be dealt with. So, um, of course, like we all know, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, data brokers out there or, or responders or sweepstake people who just kind of like to bend the rules and still will communicate to you regardless of what but again there are consequences for that um, so it's just a matter of you following up and just reporting um, and again they will be dealt with from uh, from what i've learned with ftc uh, one last question uh can we get the slides um yeah i can definitely um i can uh, i can put this out um what, it, what i can do is rob um I think I can work if with you. you and if you email them you. to me, I will post them with a video. I, I have yeah. a, we have actually a GitHub. Okay, uh, God, and the GitHub has all the, whoever sent me the presentation, uh, I, I host it in GitHub. So, yes. Right, right. And I think I believe you have recorded too. So that way when they run through recording, they can get slides that way too. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. I, I, I can definitely um, put a generic, uh, you know, of course. Um, the key uh, slides that I went through, I can definitely send them talk to you and you can uh, you can post them um, as requested. There is another question here. Uh, Dave, what was your other question? Sorry, I can't find it. I can give you guys a GitHub right now. I'm going to post it in the chat, but uh, Davey, you, if you can type, I'm sorry. Um, okay, does opting out keep you out permanently or do you need to worry about the brokers connecting, collecting new information and building a new record? Well, uh, most of them is tied using your, from what I, when I, from what I've seen talking to these data brokers, because I've called over half of them, 
and they will go by with your first name and last name. Um, and what you call once requested, even if you change your address, they will still uh, get it, get it removed. They will still keep it removed. So they have they have a data library. Uh, that connects. Let me let me put it this way: uh, that they share off, and when they put in a request, uh, from what I've seen, it's it's permanent. But again, uh, you do want to um, something like that. You may want to call them and just make sure you put in request because if you do opt online, uh, it goes through a pretty intense uh, search and removes it. But sometimes, like if you do let them know, like hey, you know, you can call them and say, like, okay, this is for six months or this is for one year. From what I've seen, like it's it's permanent request, so uh, they should not be putting it back again. Here's another question. How do you know which data broker is honest? If you give a data broker your name and email, why don't you give it the BAI? Well, so again, like if anything, we all know there's a lot of dishonest people out there, right? So this is a program uh, that's um, getting to uh, surface now. Uh, this wasn't something that was before. Um, it was done more on a very slim level. Like I remember five days ago, uh, contacting like, some of these like spoke you or whatever and I, I had asked them like can you remove this and they were like okay well um we'll put in a request and uh, we cannot guarantee your removal uh, but now because of these policies coming in play like i said again ccpoa um, sorry ccpa and uh, with this uh, opt-out option um, they are required to follow through based on a lot of privacy laws that's coming in play according to state and federal level so uh, this is something that they are obligated again but like I said, you just never know who's dishonored, who's not. Um, you just go with your instinct, and um, and then that's why you have an email. Like you know, if if there's something that they think that they have not removed or they've done, you always have an email record and say like, hey, you know, I put in this request according to privacy policy that you have posted. Um, you know, you didn't do your due diligence, and you can always follow through. So uh, again, like you always hope for the best. Um, I've seen success about seventy to eighty uh, percent. It's it's just a matter of fact um, how much uh, diligent they're going to be. But for most of them, I see they do tend to honor because these are real person, live people. A um, couple of the phone calls I call, I can remember, uh, I believe Truth Finder or two such people. This is like a call center in LA and they're like real life people that you speak to um, and then even call email communication. Uh, they, they will, uh, you're, you're dealing with real life person. So they will, uh, you know, you just have to have that faith, leap of faith, and they will honor that. Here's another question. How will the CPRA affect things? Uh, it's a very uh, powerful law. Um, it just came in this year. So like because of COVID, um, it was good timing. So it's going to get more and more prevalent and more and more uh, widespread. Uh, again, like I said, other states are working also on the similar law. So it's just a matter of uh, publicity and uh, just being uh, just being going more global. So uh, it it's supposed to be effective. Like I said, it's it's a uh, I do not I cannot remember the assembly bill. It's uh, it's backed up by an assembly bill. Uh, so that's that's something that you know is being used to back that up. So it's supposed to be very effective. Like I said, anything that some of these data brokers do not flow uh, follow uh, can be uh, considered as a violation. But again. Uh, everybody's different. Each data broker depends on their uh, oh, uh, business of ethics. Um, you always hope for the best. So uh, this is just an example of um, your best effort that you can use uh, to minimize yourself. Um, again, we all know that nothing is is hundred percent accurate, right? I mean, it's just like customer service. You know, um, you, you, with anything, um, nothing is hundred percent. So the the they. The, the webinar is more geared towards doing your best to minimize yourself uh, and to minimize your damage. So just like uh, going on the road, you know, you drive with safety um, as much as you can to keep yourself from getting into a collision. But again, you'll always have somebody, never mind how careful you are, you're going to have always somebody that's going to come and still come in your way and do a damage. So it's the same concept, guys. So uh, let me get, um, let me actually ask you this. You actually tested all these removals with a PI. Yeah, I went through quite a lot. Yes, yes. I actually went and removed myself from quite a lot of those. And how long did it take you to, to go through all these 
this thing right here? Well, it's it's a good question. Uh, there's quite a lot of uh, research. You know, I pretty much spent a weekend, and and some of them are very straightforward. Um, some of them are very clear cut. Like for example, uh, Spokio. I was on a phone call with them like five minutes. It was done, and and being verified. Um, I would say it was a couple of minutes. So I would say you know. If you, it all depends on, on your time and effort, you know, like again, it's due diligence, right? You can sacrifice your like one, two or three movies from Netflix. You can just choose to sacrifice it and just sit over and just try to get them done. Um, it, it, it all uh, depends, guys. I'm, I mean, if, if you're a real estate broker, <laughs> you know, you are quite a lot out there on the public level, then it's going to take a while to get yourself removed. But if you are a guy who's, very low profile and doesn't have you know facebook or linkedin um you're gonna be quick uh just in and out being able to remove yourself so it's how much you have advertised yourself online so again you know i've seen like especially if you're a doctor right i mean doctor's information are out there like there are articles so if you have heavy information um you know it, it just all depends it's it's case to case from everybody so but i would say like for me it was just a matter of i would say what I went through, I would say, I don't know how many there, like I would say about 10, 20, um, 20, 25. I would say I went through about 20 of these, 20, 21, 22 of these. It took me about, I would say two to three hours, but then I was doing it more because this is my passion. Cyber security is what I do. Uh, protecting PII for me and my wife is critical. We live in California, I work for state. So, you know, I'm, I'm very concerned. So the more harder, and deeper you hit the ground, the more effective you can get. So again, guys, it's all um, personal preference. It's all case to case. And again, how much you are out there available. Here's another uh, question. Aren't data brokers, yes, you can, Alan. Aren't data brokers a den of thieves? So why <laughs> should you trust them? <laughs> well, it, it's, you just never know, right? I mean, it's, you know, it's a hit or miss thing. So. Uh, you can say that, but again, it, it's pretty much like Google, right? I mean, you, you you search Google, how much Google can be effective for you? Like Google can give good information, they can give uh, bad information. So um, it's again like um, something like if you doubt, you know, that's why there's an email out there, the phone number you can contact and, uh, you know, and look at their privacy. I would always best suggest that you, we all know from uh, being a cyber security, uh, from a security person, if you always read their privacy, their terms of conditions, that can be a good guide, a good help. So that will give a grounding of how they stand, their establishment. So if all is concerned about that, I, I always suggest, and I did read quite a lot of their privacy. Uh, you can see been verified, I did post that, uh, read that. That kind of gives a grounding of uh, their establishment. So uh, again, it's just a matter of um, who you're dealing with, so. I got a couple more questions. <coughs> Can you delete your information from the various government databases? So from what I know is, I believe that the way government operates a little different. Um, when I was military, like OPM, they will not post their data uh, because of course, federal knows better about protecting you. So it's, it's hard to say, this is more like public, you know, public data, right? These data brokers are public information. So. Uh, and of course, everything Google is public information. So um, this is more like I said, you know, a good example is private investigators using them. Of course, they will not be using OPM databases because that's only secured to OPM or state data libraries. So I, from my knowledge, I wouldn't think that a, a federal, local, or county have databases out there. Now, I know like for state, they have, uh, Sacramento B, where they advertise uh, people's first name, last name, and their salaries, and there's, you know, CDT website. There's a couple other websites, state agencies that they post uh, directory data. But again, those are just minimal. It's just pretty much people's information, their phone number. So uh, minimal to the damage, but again, it just all depends, guys. Everything is case-to-case -case basis. So you have to use your best judgment and mutual, um, mutual, I believe, mutual intelligence to just figure out how how you approach those. But from my understanding, like uh, federal data will not be sold. For example, like if you go on IRS site, uh, you, like if you want to look up uh, your tax refunds, right? Um, of course, if somebody really has your social security number, your first name, last name, I believe, date of birth, and your 
gross AGI from last year, then they can only find stuff like that. So let all of those are secured in the contingent upon what you have with a prior person. Somebody here is saying the California DMV was selling private info up to this day. Well, I think, uh, yeah, we all know, right? Uh, I believe what DMV had a, a breach was it last year in LA uh, last year or before last year. Um, yeah, those things, they happen. Uh, but again, you know, um, we all know that state agencies, they're pretty good about protecting uh, uh, people's data. Um, I think there was a, a issue last year in, I can't remember, um, LA DMV agency had a breach or something. So, you know, we all know, right? No data is uh, fully secured. Uh, people can break into data centers and steal data and uh, post them on uh, the deep web and things along the line. So, you know, um, we all know MailChimp, you know, tell, sells their data to third party. So, Again, guys, we live in a very complex, complicated world. Everything is going digital. Everything is going cyber. Um, you always want to be on a positive note and and work on this. Uh, right. So it looks like they actually were selling personal data according to a, a link that was posted here. Um, is there any other questions? This was a great presentation, Daryl. Uh, thank you very much. This is awesome. I actually took a picture of this data broker, so I'm gonna go and try to erase myself on this. It's funny because you you go to DEFCOM and you go to all of these places, and basically <laughs> it becomes actually, believe it or not, it's a CTF where you you end up using mm -hmm. this uh, data brokers to dox somebody. Uh, mm -hmm. This is heavily used in open source intelligence. Heavily used. So, right. Right. Yep. So, um, oh, here's the, uh, another question. Can you ask DMB not to sell your data? <laughs> well, I believe that's something maybe what, uh, how can I put it? Um, that's uh, between you and DMB, right? I can definitely, you can reach out to them, maybe different ways you can take a legal approach or, or, you know, I'm sure like they're doing things to fix that. It just like, what is it? Uh, um, like any any agency, when they have a data breach, I believe Sony had a data breach sometime back, and a lot of people's password username was stolen, whatever. So, so people will reach out to you um, and help you to go through a certain process to uh, fix your data. Some people will give you access to, I believe, certain amount of time where you can access your credit history, your credit report, though, uh, so you can fix the damages, things along the lines. I mean, it's a little bit of process, so. I would say in this case, if you feel, uh, you know, I cannot speak for DMV, I, I don't work for them, and this is just a webinar uh, giving you an idea about how certain concepts work. Uh, my, my best approach, reach out to DMV and then uh, see how they can help. Of course, you know, uh, we can see DMV. There's other agencies out there that has you very much of your personal data, uh, your insurance companies, and uh, if they get breached, of course, um, they are there to protect you and help you what to do to get it fixed. So it, it all matters. <laughs> so I, I, sorry, I can't speak on the, on behalf of DMB in this case. Well, thank you very much. This was a pretty amazing talk. And thank you everybody that came. And we will be publishing the video uh, soon, probably tomorrow. And then I'll be publishing the, uh, the slides as well. And uh, thanks again, Daryl. Uh, this was pretty awesome. And uh, uh, thanks to all of you. Uh, we'll be in touch. Uh, I placed the link for Discord and uh, the GitHub. In the GitHub, you can also find the uh, past presentations. And we'll be announcing soon our next meeting. And uh, I'll thank you very much. So I will see you soon. Thank you so much, everybody.